Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of controlling your ego. The truth is having a big ego causes many things to fail in life, from relationships to opportunities. Ego tells us what's in it for me? Why is this happening to me? It seeks control, validation, and approval from others. It is constantly blaming others for our own failures, and it's constantly looking to control the outcomes and the future. We have all experienced a time in our lives where our ego took control of us and caused us to say something we might regret because we chose our pride. Learning how to control your ego is one of the most important life lessons you will learn. When we replace ego instead with love and compassion, we are able to see the world with a different lens. The term I changes to we. We begin to let go for the need of control and let things flow the way they're meant to. We stop looking for validation and we understand we are whole and complete just the way we are. We also then begin to take full responsibility for our lives and attitudes without the need to blame others. As Mahatma Gandhi quotes, when the ego dies, the soul awakes. Joining us now is Adam Wolichenko, who is a private markets investment professional. Adam will be sharing his insights on how to save money and invest during this troubled market during COVID-19. Adam, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Hey there, Darielle. Good, uh, good to connect. Not too bad. Um, you know, it's a bit of a different time. I'm kind of sitting here in my home office where I've been uh, spending all of my time lately. So. Other than that, doing, doing just great. So everyone is worried about saving money, investing their money during this COVID-19 crisis. Do you have any advice for them how to do so? Yeah, I have, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my time not thinking about individuals, thinking about bigger investors, but there's a lot of great lessons I think you can, you can learn from how the big guys uh, think about the world and, and do their investing. Um, the first thing I would say is it's, it seems like a bit of a new world that we're living in right now, and in some ways it is. Um, but the first piece of advice is to not forget that, um, you know, there's, you know, don't lose your head and, and don't forget that, you know, certain things still work the same way. Your checkbook still works the same way. Your bank account works the same way and uh, your paycheck still work the same way. So, you know, don't behave like you can do things you never used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And would you call this a recession or depression? Because the economy is just so uncertain right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. Uh, ultimately, both of those two words are, are words that are in the dictionary and uh, they have definitions. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting situation. I think people are quite uh, scared of, uh, of the D word, uh, just like they were scared of the word pandemic uh, at the early stages of what's going on right now. Uh, but, you know, I think, um, you know, uh, 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 scared of the D word, scared of the R word, it, it's really quite both. Um, and, and I think uh, right now, you know, a depression is something that lasts long and it's uh, global in nature. It, it, it's abrupt. It's, uh, it's really strong. Uh, a recession is something that can be a lot more temporary in nature, a lot more isolated and, uh, and, and you know, not, not quite as, as significant. But I do think it's important to realize too that you know, what you may be asking me is how long will this last? And I don't think anybody knows that so well uh, just yet, but you know, I, would, I would prepare for the worst. And of course, so many businesses are closed right now. Um, and you know, there is a threat that we might go into a depression. So do you think it's better that people hold on to their money or wait till the economy resumes? This is one of those places where I think um, individuals and, and uh, you know, people thinking about their, their own accounts and their, and their own investing can learn from some of the bigger guys. Um, if you look at some of the large institutional investors in the world, and those are you know, sovereign uh, funds, those are pension funds and you know, other big sort of pools of investment dollars. They make it a part of their operating processes to keep investing in all markets. Um, you know, it's a scary time to be thinking about putting money out into the market. Um, you know, there's so much volatility, but if you look back at history, some of the best times to, uh, to be investing, like if you looked at 2008 and 2009, were actually among the best times to be investing. So um, important to remember that if you haven't started investing yet for yourself, this is actually not a bad time to start thinking about doing so. 
uh, but but the bigger message is is to keep doing it in good times and in bad. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are people that do have the money to invest. So, what are the best areas to invest uh, to get the best on your ROI? You know, obviously, that if I was totally good at answering that question, I'd be a lot richer. Than that. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's you know what, what the advice I always give to my my friends and family that ask me about how to build their investment portfolios and where to focus. Uh, I think it's very tempting for small investors to take big bets um, without realizing it. So what I mean by that is if you have a relatively small amount of money, uh, do I recommend that, that people go out and buy cannabis stocks or, or you know, the, the latest sort of flavor of the day? The answer is no. Um, you know, the, 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 the kind of prudent and, and smart way to approach it is to begin by investing in, in, in a way that matches what's happening in the rest of the stock market or an index. Um, some of the best ways to do that for, for small investors are ETFs or exchange traded funds. They're a lower fee way of, of getting a small amount of dollars to uh, behave a lot like what's happening in the market. And I really recommend that for, for most, um, you know, just starting out investors uh, or, or people that you know, don't have huge amounts of money to invest. And what are your thoughts on cryptocurrencies? Do you think they hold their weight right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world? Cryptocurrencies would be a great example of one of those things that you know I, I kind of discussed earlier, like a cannabis stock. Uh, they're kind of the flavor of the day, in my opinion, and there's a lot of interest in them. There's a lot of uh, people that think it's great to put all of your investment dollars in something like that, uh, almost a, a get-rich-quick type idea. I would say that you know, the two things. I think that cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, really didn't behave like you might have hoped they would have when. Uh, stock market started to crash in the last couple of months um, a lot of people sort of you know, acted like it would, it would behave a lot like gold did or, or, or would and kind of rise in periods of uncertainty uh, really what we saw is, is Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies uh, really kind of decline in line with stocks which which really wasn't the whole idea there so um, I, I would say they haven't held up yet um, and then the other part is, is there more to that investment from a technology perspective and, and, and that's a more interesting question, but I would say so far, uh, they haven't done what I might have wanted. Mm -hmm. And what about the housing market? Because there are a lot of people that are looking for the the prices to drop because of the economy. Do you think that's a good place to invest right now? Yeah, housing is, is you know, a favorite topic for everybody. I mean, it is where you, where you live. And, you know, the, the way I always answer this one and just starting out is that, you know, don't put too high of an investment priority in the place that, that you live. It's, it's really an important part of your life. And, um, you know, definitely pick, picking your house around uh, what's a good investment. It may or may not be the right decision for a lot. But there is still people that are buying rental properties. Uh, you know, Airbnb was quite popular uh, before this. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's, it's still happening. What I would say is it matters a lot depending on, on the, uh, the housing market of the city you live in. Um, I live uh, here in downtown Toronto and a lot of the expectations have been that given what's happening, housing uh, prices in, in the city and, and condo prices in the city are likely to drop or, or go fl uh, flat or sideways for the next uh, number of uh, months or years. So no rush, I would say, at least in a place like this, which I think will apply to a lot of uh, the cities of, of uh, your listeners. Um, but, you know, I would say keep saving money because, you know, the, you'll need a deposit and when the time is right, uh, no rush, but you know, when the time is right and you're, you're happy with where prices are, uh, always a good place to be putting some money. Definitely. And speaking of saving money, everyone's online shopping, they're bored, they're at home. Uh, how much money should people be setting aside, especially during a crisis like this? You know, this kind of goes back to what I said earlier, that people shouldn't behave like this is an entirely different world. You know, if you, if you wouldn't have bought uh, a new uh, $300 watch uh, three months ago, it's certainly not the time to do that now. Um, this is actually a great time to be saving money and to be cutting back on those expenses that, uh, that you know, you otherwise don't need to be. Um, you know, you might think about canceling um, some tiers of uh, internet service or other other things you've been paying for that you don't need now that you're sort of not working as much or you're, you're home more. Um, great time to save money um, and, and to not sort of get caught up in loading a credit card up with uh, Amazon purchases or, or anything like that. Uh, but I do think people should look to be saving a lot of money every month, even in times like this. That should be somewhere in the area of 10% or 20% of everything they make. 
uh, and, and putting it aside and eventually investing it in, into some you know, uh, opportunities like the exchange traded funds I mentioned. I think that's great advice, Adam. So where can people connect with you on social media? So I've got a, a Twitter account that I use from time to time, and that's uh, at Adam Wilchenko. Uh, otherwise, uh, LinkedIn is a great place to find me. It's just uh, under my name, and it uh, helps me come up. All right, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for being on the show today. I appreciate it, and stay safe out there. Thanks, and you too. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through Facebook and Twitter.